Look there. I'm looking there. Anyway, hi everybody. I just did it again. I looked up there. <laughs> Welcome back to that unnamed movie chat so That's right, we're back. Is chat it so? a chat It was a chat so. <laughs> It's a chat, chat so. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to that unnamed movie chat show. She said it right, I said it wrong like three <laughs> like times three in a times. row. But anyway, we're back and we have another preview review for you. Um, the movie's probably out already, but uh, that doesn't make any difference. We're here today to talk to each other and to Sam Aberdeen from the Nexus Hub uh, about Mila Jovovich's new film from director Paul Anderson, Monster Hunter. So for those of you who don't know, Monster Hunter the movie is based on a computer game franchise, uh, which has right. been incredibly successful and comes out of Capcom in Japan, the same people who own and have distributed Resident Evil. But now we're starting to see oh, the connection yes. between the Paul W.S. Anderson and the Mila Jovovich and the video gamey games. But anyway, be that as it may, Yoli and I... We don't. We haven't played Monster Hunter. No, we haven't. Although no. it sounds like fun. It does sound like fun. Yeah. Sam has played Monster Hunter, and soon we'll chat to him about his thoughts in terms of game versus film. But we're going to give you our thoughts on the movie <clears throat> as a movie, uh, coming from the point of view that we honestly know nothing about the game, pretty much. Very true. So let's jump into it, shall nothing. we? Let's let's talk about the movie. What do you think? I had fun. You had fun. Mm, it was a nice. It was. It's very. Di I think that people find it very difficult to take a game and turn it into a movie, because sometimes there's like so much in the game, it's really hard for them to sort of say, okay, well look, this is just the core, and we're going to take that and then change it a little bit and shove it into a movie. So I think maybe with Monster Hunter, the nice thing is that there is no story in the game, as far as we know, and so there was no story for them to take and have to try to condense and twist and change and stuff. On that point. Yeah. Sam and I, thanks to our friends at Filmfinity and Sony Pictures South Africa, were able to get an interview, audio only unfortunately, with director Paul Anderson and Mila Jovovich. And Paul actually had a really interesting thing to say on that point. Check this out. Well, you know, the, the game is actually very rich in mythology. That's something that I lent on very strongly. The whole idea of this ancient civilization um, that had fallen into uh, into decay. That was something that's kind of woven throughout the whole 15 year history of the games. And that really provides the backbone for a lot of the story in the movie. So so while I'm not taking story direct from, from the game, you know, I am taking a lot of the mythology, a lot of the iconography as well of the game is very important. And then a lot of the non-player characters from the game are the characters in the movie as well. Um, and in a way, you know, the fact that, you know, this is not like Tomb Raider where you play Lara Croft and she is already, she already has a certain look and she already has a certain character established and a history. You know, when you play Monster Hunter, you create your own character. And, and that really gave me the freedom to create a new character, which is the central character of the movie, to reflect the kind of video game going experience, but also allowed me to kind of fashion a new character that, that people could empathize with and could, um, relate to even if you knew nothing about monster hunter as a video game or don't even play video games so in many ways you know the what monster hunter is as a video game is is kind of the ideal material to to adapt into a movie because you can you can be true to it in terms of like all the monsters all the costumes all the non-player characters all the weaponry is a hundred percent exactly from the game but then the central character and the story that you follow is a new one. So that's what Paul W.S. Anderson had to say about it. And I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, I, I liked, I mean, I mean, I'm commented to you during the film, how Miller always looks good in armor and stuff. And so to watch her sort of create her Artemis avatar, yeah. that was that was good fun. I thought that was pretty yeah, Kind cool. of from the ground up. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that I thought was really cool, and this reminds me a lot of Pitch Black, actually, David Tuhai's film, mm. was that despite the fact that the bad guys in the film were CGI monsters. Yeah. The the landscapes were real. It was a very real environment. Everything yes. about it was very real. It made things feel a lot more real. If it wasn't for the monsters, you wouldn't have known. <laughs> for sure. And I mean, yeah. again, Paul W. S. Anderson talks to us a little bit about finding the right locations to shoot this film and to make it real. The biggest challenge on this movie was um, 
was really finding the landscapes. It's based on a video game. When I played the game, two things really impressed me was, was these giant creatures that I thought had a really unique look and these epic landscapes. And uh, both of them said, you know, suggested like great cinema to me. I thought they were both very cinematic. And the creatures obviously have to be CG. And, and knowing that, I made the decision that if the creatures were CG, everything else in the movie should be as real as possible. And so I, I set about trying to find these epic landscapes. And of course, the, the most epic landscapes I could find were very, very remote. So the actual shooting of the movie was a real challenge because Quite often we were hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest habitation with no infrastructure, um, with the cast and crew living in tent villages um, where we dig wells to, to provide water. And then, you know, if, if anything breaks down, you're, you're, you're literally in the middle of nowhere with, with no cell phone, no internet. So it was kind of very adventurous and logistically challenging filmmaking. But what, what it provided were these, were these incredible landscapes, which we could then kind of like create this new world with. And I'm really happy we, we did it that way because I think it gives the movie a reality that it otherwise wouldn't have. I suppose one of the other big things to think about, particularly in this film, is obviously the monsters, mm. right? I mean, they had to be huge, Yeah. right? He engaged with the original creators of the game. And so when they were compiling the final shots of what the Diabolos would look like or the Rathalos would look like, they actually had the input from the designers. And to get their sign off must have been a big thing. I mean, the, mm. these, these things were huge. Um, in fact, Sam and I got the opportunity again to ask him the question. Let's say, for example, I am a Monster Hunter fanboy. It's my life. It's yeah. what I do. I sit in my chair all day and I play this game until my eyes bleed. What am I going to get out of watching the movie that I couldn't get from sitting playing the game? You're going to see those monsters come to life in a way that the game just can't do. Um, you know, the, 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 when you build creatures for a, a feature film, you build them to such a great level of detail. It's far beyond what you can kind of get from a video game engine. I think you really see the creatures come to life, and especially if you have the opportunity to go see it like in a cinema, on an IMAX screen or even watching it at home on a big screen television. The level of detail, the excitement that the creatures deliver, I just think is is fabulous. And you know, whereas you know you're watching a video game, it's clearly animation here, it's clearly photo real. I mean these things look like they really exist on a really rampaging around these epic South African and Namibian landscapes. I know it delivers on that because I worked very closely with the actual creators of the game, Sujimoto San and Fujioka San. Um, the producer and uh, director of the video game. And, you know, I would see the look on their faces when they saw some of these action scenes happen, like the stampede of the Acerops. I mean, they were delighted. And, and I'm, you know, I have to feel if the actual people who created the game and it's there, it's been their life for, you know, 15, 20 years now, if they are super excited, how can the fans not be? So just on that point of, of bringing these monsters to life, let's have a chat with Sam real quick and say, Sam, you're a Monster Hunter fan. You've played this game. You've been a, a huge fan of the series as a whole. Um, and obviously Monster Hunter World, when it came out, was a, was a smash for, for you. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you think about the movie translating the Monster Hunter universe onto the big screen? The movie was fun. I, I'll give you that. It's, it's a very fun movie in that sort of campy Paul W.S. Anderson way. Like if you've watched Resident Evil and Mortal Kombat, you know exactly what to expect and you get exactly that kind of fun with this movie. It, it's it's such a weird movie because it's it's doing what the Resident Evil movies did in terms of like fun factor, but it's also trying to be this, you know, epic that pays homage to the video games. And it's a lot to actually con condense into one movie. And I think that's where it sort of runs into some problems. But for the most part, it is, it's a lot of fun. Coming from what you just said, as a gamer, you gave us a question to ask Miller, which we did do. Um, and the question was around her preparation for the film. She actually talks about having played Monster Hunter World. What was your experience like with the game itself? And, and having completed the movie, do you think that it captured your favorite aspects of, of playing the game? I think definitely what we were able to capture was many parts of the games that I think fans are gonna love. Um, you know, some of their favorite characters, the most iconic characters are in the movie. 
And also the one of the main aspects I think of the game is these incredible, huge and immersive landscapes. And I think that we captured really beautifully in the movie. You know, the fact that we filmed everything on location and that everything was real. Um, these, these incredible untouched places that are hundreds of miles from any uh, living, you know, any habitation, any town, any village. Um, you know, we were, we were able to, to really capture these alien landscapes that look so much like the game. Um, and that, you know, especially when you watch them on a big screen, it's just such an immersive experience. And uh, I think that's one of the main aspects that I loved about the game was, was that, you know, falling into this other universe, into this other world that was so lush and so big. And, you know, there was times when I would play the game where I would avoid the monsters and just try and like explore the forest and explore the desert and find different mushrooms or find different ingredients to make potions and just wanted to like, you know, just just be a tourist in this landscape um, because it was so beautiful. Our friends at Filmfinity and Sony Pictures South Africa, thank you so much for the opportunity to actually just be able to talk to Paul and to Miller. It, it really was uh, the entertainment highlight of an otherwise way below oh. par 2020. <laughs> Don't even go there. I'm not going we yet. did manage to get one last question in with Miller. Miller, I just wanted to say, you, you through your career, you've played a number of different kinds of roles. You've done a number of different kind of movies. You mentioned earlier about the fact that you always aspired to be magical, a magical creature and do, do these crazy things and almost superhero-esque um, aspirations. But is there something special, a, a special allure to video game adaptions that draws you to them? You know, the allure for me is, is, is to go into these other universes. The allure for me is playing, you know, superhuman characters and being able to, you know, really challenge myself and, and, and escape into these worlds. You know, the, the video game aspect is more my husband. I mean, you know, he's always been a gamer and, you know, he gets these properties and, and of course he writes these scripts and he wants me to do them. And, and we have so much fun doing them together. Um, but, you know, for me, if it was, a book adaptation, you know, or a video game adaptation. I just, I just love the sci-fi aspect. I love, you know, these different universes. I love playing these kind of bigger than life characters. And he gives me that opportunity, albeit it's a video game character as opposed to, you know, a, some, a book character. That's awesome. Thank you so much. To close off real quick, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. I thought it was good fun. Um, I did feel, and I think, I think Sam had similar feelings that it needed a bit more of a climax towards yeah. the end, but I do think that it sets up the Monster Hunter, for lack of a better word, world yeah. for further films. There's probably going to be another one, um, and it'll probably be just as much fun. I think the, the appearance of Ron Perlman in it was great. Um, I think the casting was cool. I loved the relationship between Miller and Tony. I thought it was really, really fantastic, especially the fact that, that it was fun that they couldn't understand each other. Yes, that the, was fun. It, the, the little bit of miscommunication yeah. kind of thing going on there was like pretty chocolate. Cool. Chocolate now <laughs> means good. Chocolate <laughs> means like yummy. It's whatever like lacquer. It's like. lacquer. Lacquer. Yeah, it's like lacquer. They should have just used lacquer. Anyway, yeah. lacquer. <laughs> just borrowed a little old of it. <laughs> <laughs> but from us here at the Unnamed Movie Chat Show, we had a great time. Thank you so much to Filmfinity and Sony Pictures South Africa for giving us the opportunity not only to, to get the screener link to be able to watch the film early, but also for the opportunity to have a chat with Paul W.S. Anderson and Mila Jovovich, which was absolutely spectacular. And we hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We plan to do a lot more. So, if you like, like and leave comments below. Yes. Below, 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 below. Tell us what you think. If you want us to review any kind of movies, let us know what you want us to see. We've got actually a full whiteboard full of films that we've been watching during lockdown. That through we this just weird year haven't done videos for. That we will be doing some videos for in the future. So keep it yeah. locked on here. But uh, in the meantime, once again, thanks so much to everybody. Sam Aberdeen from the Nexus Hub. Thank you for your inputs and your time. And uh, we'll catch you again next time. Yep, at the movies. Peace. Bye.